you unusual for Apple to have an event in the evening time. So I want to ask you, what's your big takeaway? Well, my big takeaway, obviously, is the M3 generation of chips. This is going to set the stage for Apple's Mac line for the entire year upcoming. We've seen that they like to disperse these chips throughout their entire lineup, uh, and it gives us kind of a good picture of what the performance is going to be like for pretty much every Mac going forward until the next generation comes out. So it really sort of sets the stage for where Apple is heading in the next year or so with its processor architecture. All right, so it sets the stage for Apple for the next year ago. I'm looking at the stock right now in the pre-market. It's in the red right now. Investors didn't seem to love it. Um, what do you think investors are responding to? I think probably some of it is that this might have seemed like a little bit of an underwhelming event. Um, obviously, it's hard to top something like the iPhone event, which happens every September and is a huge splash. Um, the iPhone makes up a huge chunk of Apple's revenue. The Mac is a smaller part of it, and I think probably people were looking for something maybe with a little more pizzazz to it. But it, it I think there's probably more going on here than uh, maybe a lot of people would get just from the surface level of it. All right, so it sounds like you weren't blown away by the scary fast theme. That didn't do it for you. So I do want to talk to you about one thing. The new lineup of maps, it really appears to be focused on professional users, musicians, artists, uh, software designers, et cetera. Um, one thing analysts like yourself, they're noting right now, they eliminated a $1,300 MacBook Air that was really popular with businesses. But again, they also replaced, they lowered, excuse me, the price of the MacBook Pro by 300 bucks. Give us a sense, what, what's the strategy there? If you have a product that people like, why eliminate that and then lower the price on the higher end version? Yeah, I think what happened there is sort of that 13 inch MacBook Pro, which was sort of the entry level, was a holdover. It had a lot of the old technology in it. It was an old design. Uh, it had some technology like the touch bar in it that were not used by anybody, any other computer on the market. They basically had gotten rid of it and all the rest of the Mac line. So I think what they're trying to do is push people towards something that's a little more modern in the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And yeah, it does have a higher price, but the technology that's bringing with it is definitely more powerful than what came before. So it's really targeting okay. those power users and people who want to use a high level machine. All right. Speaking of more modern, Dan, let's talk a little bit of AI. So Apple was talking a lot about the neural engine. What does that mean for future possible AI products? Yeah, the neural engine is a part of the Apple Silicon uh, architecture that is specifically focused on machine learning uh, and our, basically anything artificial intelligence related. Uh, and they beefed up in the M3 the power and speed of this little part of the architecture. And I think that points towards the idea that Apple realizes AI and machine learning is going to be increasingly important to them going forward. There's been a lot of talk of them doing sort of these generative AI products like a lot of the other companies in the market. Um, but the fact that they can build the hardware specifically themselves and tune it is going to be a real potential differentiator for them.